this car and go. Charleston has begun to pick up the pieces, but it will take weeks, months, maybe even years to repair the damage. There is a bright spot to all of this, though. Thanks to sophisticated weather equipment these days, most South Carolinians knew the storm was coming. They were prepared, and so casualties and injuries were kept to a minimum. Not just a bright spot, but a blessing oh, for all the really people is. down there. Thank you, Alice. Good report. A North Royalton man, Jeff Cavallo, is a survivor of Hugo. He was vacationing on St. Croix in the Virgin Islands when Hugo hit there on Wednesday night. Cavallo is back now, and he brought his eyewitness news watchers videotape with him. These are pictures of the harbor at St. Croix, which he shot, not at the height of the storm, mind you, but while it was still in progress. And look at the boats being blown around. And now listen to Cavallo and watch his pictures of what was left after the storm passed through. All you do is look around at the pieces, parts blown all over. You know, some of the boats were found like a couple miles inland where they just happened to be at the wrong place, picked it up and tossed it inland. Most of them were just up on shore, you know, close. Some of them went down in the harbor exactly where they were moored, which means they took on water before the wind got them. Cavallo told Alice Edwards today that he has never been so frightened in his whole life. He also says local officials clocked Hugo's winds at 155 miles an hour, much higher than the official reading of 135 miles an hour there in the Virgin Islands. Is what's left of Hugo now downgraded to a tropical storm going to affect our weather here in northern Ohio? Well, let's go to Don Webster now for the answer on that one. Don? Well, it is affecting us right now, Ted. Uh, what we are experiencing is what is left of Hugo. And it is uh, moving on a track from uh, southern Ohio and will pass the way it looks uh, right now a little bit to the east of Cleveland and then head up to the northeast. It's not a hurricane, of course, but it is a, a very strong low pressure system. There's a lot of rain. Down in Mansfield, they've had over two inches of rain in the past couple of hours. Not that much here in Cleveland, but it continues to pound down and this rain is going to continue tonight and tomorrow. What we are looking at right now is the shoreway, or I should say the uh, inner belt outbound, people trying to get home uh, to the suburbs away from downtown Cleveland and uh, it's slow going and this rain is not going to get any better. As a matter of fact, it'll get worse before it gets better. We have a flood watch in effect for the entire TV5 viewing area that will remain in effect for the next few hours. We'll check our complete weather forecast. A good wet one for you in just a very few minutes. Ted Dunn, it's going to be a long night, I suspect. Thank you. A, a small army of Cleveland police officers moved into some of the east side projects this afternoon. Our Bill Yunkin was right there with them, and he says the success of this sort of operation depends entirely on surprise. More than a dozen strike force and SWAT officers hit four public housing projects here on the city's east side, areas where crack sales go on 24 hours a day. The one in the blue is running gravel. Some people try to run away. They don't get far. Others throw away the evidence. Sometimes they're caught doing it. We got it. A crack pipe to go with a pistol found in the suspect's car. One of two guns police seized this afternoon. Six people were taken into custody on drug charges. Police say other charges could be filed. This kind of operation draws a lot of attention. When People like that. Thelma Thompson likes what she sees. But when I see y'all busting them, I like it. I love it. There are several reasons for this kind of an operation. Strike force officers are looking for narcotics, weapons, but they're also here to send a message that at any time, they could move into your neighborhood. This is the first time the strike force has used the new police dogs. Sergeant Roger Denneral thinks they will make a big difference. I think the drug losers are losing here. You can see the dogs are going through the vehicles, finding additional drugs, which we might have normally missed. It's an advantage for us. We finally have the up. Just as quickly as police hit a location, the strike force moves out to another neighborhood. The second parking lot is the big one. Half SWAT just pull right into that parking lot. Police promise more of this type of operation as they stuff up their war on the crack dealers. No one is sure it'll work, but maybe, just maybe, this will help. Get them. Get them all. Get them all, and I mean it. Because for the simple fact, kids getting a hold to it, little kids, and it's killing us. In Cleveland, I'm Bill Yunkin, Eyewitness News. What amazing pictures today. Those arrested, by the way, will go to court on Monday morning, and until then, they'll be spending their weekend behind bars. George Forbes tonight has an endorsement he feels is crucial in his campaign for mayor of Cleveland. Congressman Lou Stokes is backing Forbes. It's official now. The congressman says Forbes' city hall experience and his basic ability to get things done make him the best man for the job. And this confirms an unofficial endorsement at Stokes' annual Labor Day picnic, you'll recall. 
Tim Hagan, also a candidate for mayor, got advance word of the Stokes endorsement, and he ripped it a full two hours earlier today. Hagan wonders how Stokes can support Forbes now when just two months ago he criticized Forbes' defense of the police in the Arthur Fechner drug case. Well, Congressman Stokes indicated that George Forbes couldn't serve two masters in this community. That is, he couldn't speak for the black community and be on the side of the police with respect to the Fechner case. Stokes does not deny criticizing Forbes' views of the police action in the Fechner case. On that single issue, on the Fechner case, he and I still have a different philosophical view. We still differ. Nonetheless, the... Stokes says Forbes is the best choice to run this city, despite the difference of opinion on the Fechner case. The chairman of the Cuyahoga County Republican Party, Bob Hughes, says Forbes will win the primary, but, well, we're going to let Alan DiPietro pick up the story from that point on. The Hughes poll was done by telephone among more than 500 registered Cleveland voters who said they would cast a ballot in the October 3rd mayoral primary election. The poll showed a phenomenal recognition of all five candidates. Those polled told who they would vote for. George Forbes would get 21% of the vote. Benny Bonanno would get 16%. Ralph Perk Jr., 12%. And Tim Hagan, also 12%. Hughes, who's been in these parts more than 30 years now, says of roughly a third of the people that he's polled say they will vote in the mayoral election, but as yet haven't decided on a candidate. Hughes says Forbes will win the primary, but that will be all Forbes will win. Whichever wins among Bonanno, Hagen, or Perk will be the next mayor of Cleveland. I don't think you can run for mayor of Cleveland with those negatives that high. Here's why Hughes reaches that conclusion. People were asked which candidate they would not vote for. 23% said they would not vote for Forbes, but 64% are undecided. Like many elections in Cleveland, the voting breaks down along racial lines. We show that one out of approximately one out of every four voters are saying they will not vote for George Forbes under any circumstances. That moves to almost one out of two on the west side. Hughes says there is still a large undecided vote out there, but he doesn't think the money spent on a television campaign ads over the next 11 days will sway many minds. Alan DiPietro, Eyewitness News. Well, Hughes says it would be incorrect for people to assume Forbes' campaign is as much of a crusade as was Carl Stokes' mayoral bid back in the year 1968. Hughes says Carl Stokes was perhaps the most charismatic person to ever run for mayor in the city of Cleveland. A Cleveland man has two lessons we can all learn a lot from. His story is coming up in my journal report, which is next as Eyewitness News continues. Now, own the exciting 89 Mustang Convertible for as little as $12,989. 65 Mustangs to choose from, but at these prices, they won't last. So hurry to Mullinax Ford, East and Wycliffe, West and Amherst. Take a good look. Can you see braces? Hardly, because they're no metal brackets, just an almost invisible appliance that blends with your teeth. These are clear braces, which are also available at the dental center at Sears. Treatment can begin without a down payment, no interest charges, no payment for 90 days. Braces at the dental center start at $1,600 with 22 monthly payments. Clear ceramic braces start higher. Treatment must begin before the end of this month at the dental centers and all Sears stores throughout northeastern Ohio. Call for a free consultation. After making it on Broadway, some of the finest entertainers around go off-Broadway. They appear on the pleasure ships of Norwegian Cruise Line. No other cruise line offers such entertainment. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus... There's a lot of thought behind the engineering that goes into a sub. But one of the most thoughtful things about a Saab wasn't designed by an engineer. It was engineered by an accountant. It's a Saab lease from Saab Scania Financial Services Corporation. It's for Saabs only. And it's a very smart way to drive a very intelligent car. Lease a Saab 900 for $235 a month at your local Saab dealer while supplies last. After Bruce Willis talked about his new movie, In Country. Harry Water has scoops on your favorite daytime stars, and he'll take your calls. Plus the debate over cholesterol. It's all the worry over nothing. Find out Monday. 
He is a man of strength in more ways than one, I should point out. His name is John Black, and he's the subject of my journal report tonight, a weekly look at some of the names and issues behind the news. Tonight, a man who believes in what he's doing. These are some of John Black's men down in the flats on a recent weeknight demonstrating their strength in a charity fundraiser. The men and women who put on these shows are proud of their bodies and they're proud of their cause. And this is John Black putting on another show. Gotta get wild around here. Let's go. John Black owns and operates Black's Health World in Cleveland, and he is tough. In 1982, I was in national competition, and I tore my kneecap off, and all my ligaments in my other leg were ripped out. And the Lord healed me and brought me all the way back to breaking the world championship record of 821 pounds. Ask John Black about his powerlifting team, and he'll tell you it's the strongest team in the world. He's proud of that, but that's not all he's proud of. And this is John Black's other team, which he's proud of. It's his prison ministries team. On this day, they're visiting the Cleveland Juvenile Detention Center, where the message is twofold. Impress them with muscle, and then impress them with the word. There is no one that does good, not even one. That's inclusive. There's no one that does good. Everybody makes mistakes. John Black teaches inmates that everyone makes mistakes and that their lives can be turned around. The Lord can heal you. The Lord can do anything. And it's such an important thing because a lot of people are afraid of the Lord. They don't understand his mercy. Black takes his muscle and Bible show to 30 prisons every year. And because of his brute strength, he never hears a complaint. After all, he contends that in the whole world, there is no muscle strength team that's tougher than his own. We're all qualified for world championships in two federations. The strongest team in the history of the world? Absolutely. The strongest team in the history of the world. That's a pretty heavy charge. Can you back that up? Absolutely. The trophies and plaques are all at the gym. Everyone's welcome to come down and see it. <laughs> and you can see them. John Black's Health World is located on Cleveland's west side right there on Lorraine Avenue. And by the way, every time he visits men doing time in jail, he always leaves behind for them a bench press and a bodybuilding gym for free. It's just one more way. He likes to help. 800 Akron jobs have been saved. Good news. For months, rumors have been circulating that Akron-based Uniroyal Goodrich Tire was for sale and that jobs were in jeopardy.